Hello, everyone. Welcome to USBN Basketball Weekly. This is the first installment here as we introduce you to the United States Basketball Network. First, let's introduce you to us. I'm Nick Pierce. He's Tim Scarborough, and we are your lead broadcasters for the USBN and the upcoming United States Basketball Championship, which we're going to tell you about a little bit more in detail here in just a bit. Welcome into USBN Basketball Weekly, though. This is the video podcast where each week we update you on happenings around the USBN. And first of all, let's just introduce ourselves. As I said, I'm Nick Pierce. I'm glad to be here with you. Glad to be a part of USBN. Uh, I've been uh, calling college basketball and professional basketball for many years now. I've worked with uh, several leagues around the country, the ABA, uh, Division I college basketball, been a part of some NCAA broadcasts, NCAA tournament broadcasts, I should say. And uh, it's just a pleasure to be here bringing you professional basketball outside of the National Basketball Association. And there's plenty of it out there, folks. There's a lot of talented players in this country, and I'm very excited to be part of this product and bringing some of the excitement and the action to you. Tim Scarborough alongside here as well. Tim, I know you've worked with uh, TBT for a long time. You are a college basketball and professional basketball aficionado. More than 20 years now in broadcasting. And uh, Tim, I know this has got to be really exciting for you here as well. Yeah, you know, Nick, I can't wait to get involved in this. You know, when I was approached about it, you know, obviously I do a lot of college basketball covering uh Conference USA, West Coast Conference, Mountain West. I'm all over the country uh, doing games on uh, stadium TV and Bally's, um, Fox Sports, ESPN. Um, and then in the summer, as you said, I do TBT, I had to represent TBT. And uh, this is, is uh, something a little bit different for me. You know, I, obviously I'm a, a big NBA fan, but, you know, covering college basketball, and then watching guys go to the NBA, it's just not that many of them when, when we're being honest, right? It's only 450 jobs. And then there's a good deal of guys that go overseas. Um, and I see a lot of those guys come back for TBT in the summer. But then there's this big kind of chasm of guys that are really good, but you really don't know where they are or who they're playing for. And it turns out a lot of guys stay in the United States and play in these minor leagues as did I when I graduated from Liberty many years ago um, in the Washington, D.C. area. But there's some really good talent, some really good leagues that are around the country. Um, the ECBL is a really good league out of North Carolina, dominated really by the primetime players, a team that plays in TBT. Um, there's teams in Florida. There's big-time leagues in Texas and Oklahoma. So, you know, we're going to start covering some of those and bringing people those teams, those coaches, those players, so you can get a little bit more familiar and realize that, you know, NBA and college basketball isn't everything. There's a lot more really good basketball being played, and I'm excited to be a part of this whole process. Yeah, no doubt, Tim, and uh, I, I can echo those sentiments uh, quite a bit here. And, you know, the USBN, it's, it's not there to compete with the NBA, but as you said, there's so many – players and just opportunity the opportunities are so few in the NBA and the G League that there's a lot of players without a home without an avenue to display their skills well that's what the USBN is out to uh, bridge that gap so to speak and and to give those players an opportunity and an avenue to showcase their skill set and perhaps eventually go on to make it into the NBA but uh, the United States Basketball Network it's it's uh it's new it's a new venture and uh, they'll be bringing you the United States Basketball Championship a little bit later on this summer, which is a tournament style. It's a league tournament style setting, similar to TBT, but I think you could probably liken it a little bit more to what we see in college athletics, where you have different leagues, different conferences out there, and then you have champions of these conferences. Well. Then you have the best teams come together in, say, the NCAA tournament or the college football playoff. I think that's the idea here for the USBC, the United States Basketball Championship, is to get some of those better teams, those top-tier teams from the leagues that you mentioned, Tim, and get them together to play in a tournament-style setting and crown a champion, a champion of the United States. And there's yeah. really not one out there. There really hasn't been anything like this up to this point. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's fair to say. You know, obviously the NBA, those are the best players and not just the United States, but the, the world. world. Yeah. The world's best players come to the United States and they compete for United States teams, right? 
Uh, and of course, Canadian teams as well as Toronto won the world championship uh, two seasons ago. But other than that, there's really not a national professional champion. Obviously, there's a college national basketball champion. The Baylor Bears won it last year. Um, and then you think about some of those Baylor Bears, four of them went to the NBA. Well, you know, they graduate five or six guys. Where do those other couple guys go, right? That's what you want to, that's where we're here to kind of bring you when we see teams that go really far and then you wonder where do those guys that you don't, that don't make it to the NBA, they aren't playing overseas. And some of these guys that aren't playing overseas are good enough to play overseas. And they just don't want to go to the other side of the world to play basketball. They'd rather stay here and compete at a high level in the United States. So that's why there's so many leagues. I was really surprised at the volume of players that are still here in the United States playing this time of year. It's a, a really impressive talent pool. There's a lot of good coaches um, as well. And so what we're going to try to bring is with the, with the USBN, this network is going to try to bring you some of that action on television. But most importantly, the USBC, which is the championships, as you mentioned, that structure, um, I compare probably to FIBA soccer or mm-hmm. FIBA basketball around the country, around the world, right? So at the end of it, you you know, the way this thing will progress, you'll have teams that get relegated down. You'll have teams that could possibly get elevated up. There's talks about perhaps maybe coming up with a deal with the G League or and the NBA is obviously the G League is part of that and maybe playing in the G League for a year, whoever wins this championship. So there's a lot of things that can, can uh, develop from this. And the biggest part of it, I think, is putting it all on television. Because once you put it on TV and give it the exposure it deserves, that's when you're really going to start to see even better players start to make those decisions. You know what? I can play on TV. I can stay in the United States. Mm-hmm. And I can make good money. And I can be right here and, and fulfill my professional basketball dream. So this is this is really a great opportunity for, for everyone involved. Yeah, a couple of things you mentioned there, Tim, that I want to highlight is a chance to stay at home in the United States and play. And that's something that uh, a lot of these guys are looking for the opportunity to do because you hear, like you said, so many guys go overseas, they get the big contracts in uh, Europe or, or Asia or what have you. But this is an opportunity to stay home and play for something and be closer to family, be closer to friends. And as you said, the television aspect of this, uh, Black News Channel is uh, going to come on as a partner with United States Basketball Network as an avenue to bring these games into your homes and give you an opportunity to see just what USBN and eventually the USBC is all about. So we're really looking forward to that. I think it's a tremendous opportunity. And uh, looking forward to this high quality production here as well. I mean, the things that you see now, uh, we, we talk about TBT and its infancy stages and what it's grown to now. And TBT is all over network television throughout the summer. I think the, the potential and the possibility exists here for USBN to go on to be something like that in, in due time. And uh, having a partner like Black News Channel that is nationally uh, syndicated and uh, carried everywhere uh that's going to be a good opportunity here for these players i think and and being a part of tbt and its humble beginnings you know the very first games i ever called for them was in a division three gym in philadelphia where i'm incidentally from Uh, i don't no longer live up there but i got to go home to philly call some games at nine o'clock in the morning on a saturday (laughs) and that's where they introduced the elam ending which if people are familiar with tbt they end the games by turning off the clock and playing to a target score. Um, I was um, proud to say, I'm proud to say that I was one of the first announcers to call a game in the Elam ending scenario. And now that's a big part of TBT. Um, but yeah, the, the growth of TBT, exponential growth over the last few years, you know, coming from that to games on national TV or ESPN, uh, you and I got to do a dunk contest here in Atlanta um, on national TV, uh, they do a three-point contest. They did a three-point contest this year. Um, so there's a lot of uh, opportunities that TBT sees just by having an idea and then watching that idea come to fruition. So um, already, to me, USBN is a little bit ahead of where TBT was at its beginning stages just from the fact that 
you know, the Black News Channel is already involved in this. And then you talk about the production behind it. You know, Joseph Marr, who runs NECF, one of the production companies and production partners, he's a guy that created Pardon the Interruption and, and, and Around the Horn. You know, I have a picture. I don't know if you can see it back there. I was on Pardon the Interruption on the set with uh, Tony and, and Mike. So um, I love that show. That's a, a, a great idea. So, you, you know, just, I'm, I tell you that audience to get to so you can understand that this is not just you know uh, uh, someone's iphone on youtube (laughs) showing this game this is going to be a real television production and quite honestly humble brag that's why they bring in guys like you and me to do this thing right so um the games of the week that we're going to show each week they're going to be quality games um the, the first game is going to be here in atlanta um atlanta uh georgia kangaroos georgia spartans both teams are chomping at the bit, ready to go. It's going to be a full gym. You and me are going to be suited up, ready to go. I cannot wait. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be fantastic. And some of the things you mentioned with TBT are things that uh, USBN is also um, uh, taking part in as well. That's a slam dunk contest, a, a three-point shooting contest. These are all things that uh, USBN will will be I- incorporating into its product. But uh, also, I think, too, it's important to, to point out, while TBT is has generated so much excitement, and, and rightfully so, uh, USBN, I think, is a little unique in, in its own way in that you've got consistent established teams that are going to be playing in this. So teams that are point. that that have their own hometowns, their own fan bases. Uh, you look at teams like the Jacksonville Giants. You look at teams uh, like the Syracuse Stallions, the Georgia Kangaroos, whom you mentioned, uh, Chicago Fury, just to name a few. Uh, teams that have their own fan bases, their own hometowns, and now taking it to the next level, maybe outside of that regional Uh, tie and draw that they have but taking it to the next level on a national scale national television for a national championship so I think that's important to point out as well yeah and and it's going to be interesting to see which teams apply to get in um there's teams that are kind of big fish and well there's a lot of teams that are lobbying to get into this oh yeah there's there's teams knocking (laughs) at the door yeah, it's, it's, it's no, not no just a uh, it's not just a Johnny Come Lately or you know this Ham and Egger team. I mean, these are like I said, we mentioned some of these uh, legitimate teams, and there's going to be some teams that are lobbying to get in, and some teams that get left out. Yeah, and and like some of these leagues, uh, we mentioned the UBA, the UBL, United Basketball League, you know, the OTE, Overtime Elite Basketball League. There's a lot of leagues around the country. The FBA, Florida Basketball Association, of course, a lot of people are familiar with the ABA, where the Jacksonville uh, Giants play. Um, but yeah, I did there's games a lot in the ABA once upon yeah, exactly. a time. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I was know. with the uh, West Virginia Blazers for a season, and uh, yeah, that that's good quality basketball there for sure. Yep, and you'll see you'll see uh, guys that you'll recognize that you saw play in high school and college, and even sometimes guys who played in the pros. Maybe you've gotten injured or decided to come home and are now trying to play their way back to where they were. So, um, again, that's going to, it's going to be some exciting basketball. But I'm really excited about the TV production, the TV side of this, which is where you and I come in. And we're going to be here every week kind of talking things up. We're not talking specifics yet about players because we really don't know which teams we're going to be showing as this kind of evolves. But once we get dig into that, and hey, I'm, I mean, I'm in the middle of college basketball season. I'm in Portland, Oregon this weekend. I'm, I'm back here in Georgia. I'm all over the place, Florida, Texas, doing college games. But in the meantime, I'm going to have one eye on some of these other leagues now that I'm involved in this, trying to see, you know, standings and see which teams are interested in, in applying for uh, the, the USBC coming up, you know, once we announce the dates and times and, and, and places where those games will be held. But that tournament is going to be, I mean, just uh, blazing on fire. And I can't wait to be a part of it. Yeah, no doubt. The United States Basketball Championship from the United States Basketball Network. That'll be coming up a little bit later on this spring and summer. So keep it locked here to get those dates and those teams and find out which cities will be hosting uh, these uh, championship, these regional championships here as well. And make your plans to either be a part of it in person or watch on television. As I said, the Black News Channel will have a lot of that coverage for you. Also important to point out here, Tim, uh, you know, we talk about some of these leagues and one thing I can remember from the ABA is some of the little, uh, 
uh, quirky rules and, and things. I mean, you mentioned uh, Elam ending. That's something I think that has a lot of uh, traction as something that could potentially be here to stay or maybe even be adopted by the NBA at some point. But you talk about, you know, I can remember there was a red light rule or something or another in uh, the the ABA. I don't know if they still have it or not, but uh, something to do with a, a turnover in the front court could lead to a three-pointer on the other or a four-pointer on the other side. You don't have a lot of that stuff going on here. I think it's going to be easy for folks to follow. It's NBA rules. It's NBA format, four quarters, 12-minute quarters. Everything that you see in an NBA game, it's going to be easy for the fans to follow. And it's going to be, like we said, some top-tier talent playing here. And I think that's important as well. Yeah, the action on the floor will will energize the basketball fans. And again, even if you're not familiar with some of the players, I think with us bringing it to you on TV, you and I specifically giving the backgrounds of some of these players, oh, yeah. and their, their goals and their, um, uh, their achievements that they've done within their leagues. You know, the, you know, the Georgia, Georgia Kangaroos are independent team, but there's a lot of teams that are playing in leagues and playing for their championships, which is the parallel that you drew of the conference tournaments, right? And then, um, there's no automatic bid per se into the USBC, but you know the teams that win their leagues, the teams that competed for championships in their leagues are going to be the teams that are going to want to try to compete for this national championship. Now, TBT, one difference is at the end of TBT, there's a million dollars at that pot, a pot of gold at the end of that uh, rainbow. So there's no prize like that yet, but I think down the road, that may be something that will, uh, will, will factor into this whole USBC, USBN scenario as well yeah absolutely and uh you know anytime you can increase that pot of gold that's going to just increase the, uh, <laughs> the comers from uh, all over the place here but uh yeah i I, th- I think that you know we're living in a day and age of tournament style league basketball um i think that there's a lot of excitement naturally around that when you get into these knockout rounds with uh, for fans and these one and done situations uh but again i just think that one thing that makes uh usbn and the USBC, it'll be producing unique is that these these are established teams and teams that have, uh, like you said, won their league or, or been a part. Maybe they've been the top dog in their league and their region. But let, let's see how they stack up around the country. And, you know, let's see. Let's crown a, a United States basketball champion. And let's see who the best professional team is. You know, look, we know the NBA is what it is. It's great. It's the top dog. It always will be. But that's the world champions. Let's see, you know, of these these guys that haven't quite gotten that opportunity yet, let's see how they stack up with some of these other teams from around the country. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. Yeah, I think you uh, bring up an interesting point about the composition of the teams. Um, the things like the TBT, there are guys that are playing overseas, playing against each other or not even seeing each other. And then they get together for three weekends right? Um, and, and try to develop some chemistry. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Now, TBT, you have alumni teams. So sometimes, and sometimes you don't, but those alumni teams, maybe those guys play together in college. So there's some familiarity with our leagues of the, the USBN and the USBC, those championships, those teams are going to have, uh, cohesion. Those teams are going to have chemistry Some because they've been competing. Yeah, yeah they go, they've been competing together for the uh, throughout the course of the year. Just so, makes it a better brand of basketball. Oh, it does. Yeah, it, it, it absolutely does. You're, you're going to see a, a more crisp game, if you will. You know, fewer turnovers. Um, I, I think people are going to be surprised at the athletic quotient of these games in terms of the game is going to be played above the rim. There's going to be a lot of good ball handling, you know, a little bit of street ball at times, yeah. but <laughs> you got with the, with the organization. So, right. you know, obviously you got referees and, and fans and, you know, so it's an organized basketball, but it's going to be a, a street basketball mm-hmm. element to it, which brings a little bit more excitement to it, in my opinion. Well, I grew up in the Atlanta area, and one thing I know that Atlanta folks are going to appreciate is a little street ball down there. Absolutely. (laughs) I grew up around that. I wasn't talented enough to do it myself, but I grew up around it. I know about it. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. So here's what you need to do. If if what we're talking about is interesting you, if it's interesting to you, you need to go on YouTube. You need to find the USBN, the United States Basketball Network. Hit the subscribe button. Follow their content. This show, USBN Basketball Weekly, will be there 
each and every week to get you primed and pumped for the games that are coming up. And of course, with information coming up on the United States Basketball Championship in the weeks and months to come. So go ahead, go to USBN usbn excuse me on uh, youtube subscribe to the channel and you can follow us there each and every week and of course tim you and i will have the call of the georgia kangaroos and the georgia spartans that's coming up on january the 8th in atlanta and uh, that will be uh, televised as well to a national audience so we're looking forward to bringing you that i can't wait to dig into these teams and bring the folks a little bit more next week that's what we're going to be talking about we'll be previewing that game and breaking down some of the matchups coming up here should be a lot of fun right should be a ton of fun. I'm excited to be working with you again on the air. Uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, pop culture references that, you know, quite frankly, some of my uh, other TV partners don't always get, but you and me, we're always <laughs> on the same page. So, you know, it should be fun. Yeah, it's going to be a blast. I'm looking forward to it as well. Uh, Tim, it should be a lot of fun for us personally, and then uh, hopefully we can make it fun for the folks out there watching at home as well. So hope to see you back here. USBN Basketball Weekly will come your way again next week, again with a preview of the Georgia Kangaroos and the Georgia Spartans coming up on January 8th in Atlanta. Until then, for Tim Scarborough, I'm Nick Pierce. Thanks so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button, and we'll talk to you next week. So long, everybody.